Welcome, my fellow Geminis. Uh, this is your November 2024 reading. This is for Gemini Sun, Moon, Rising. I have a Gemini Moon, um, Virgo Sun, so I'm doubly ruled by Mercury. Um, this is for those intuitively guided. I thank you for paying attention to your intuition. So do your spirit guides. Um, and I say that because I do read through my spirit guides. I always invite them into every reading. And I do feel like my spirit guides connect with yours. So real quick, I want to say definitely feel comfortable asking your guides to give you like certain signs of confirmation that this reading is for you. You know, you'll know it. You'll feel it. Um, it'll resonate for sure. Um, but again, ask for signs of confirmation, whether that be a number, a name, whatever it may be. That's between you and your guides. Um, this is also for those who may be in love with the Gemini, uh, platonically, romantically, and same thing, your guides know you're here. So be open to also receiving messages for yourself. Um, all right. So, you know, I am doing the readings a little early because I am planning on taking a break um, the second half of October. So I wanted to try to get as many readings as I can get done so that you'll have your reading in time. Uh, so. Some people are confused, like, what are you doing, doing November already? You know, I feel like readings find you in divine time anyway. So I don't worry about that. I hope you don't. Um, just trust, trust in divine timing. Uh, you know, and what I mean by that is sometimes you, you will come across a reading and, you know, you're not really looking at the date and you click on it and you watch a reading and you're like, oh man, that's everything I needed to hear. It's it's confirmation that I needed at this moment. And then you look at the date and you're like, oh, it's a year old. That's divine timing. You know what I mean? Like your guides will get a message, a sign, a reading to you right when you need it. So be open to that if you would. Um, all right, guys. So we are doing opposite signs again for the month. Um, something I started in September, I was intuitively guided to do it and I totally get it now, you know, like, and then if you think about like your opposite sign, sometimes is what we're lacking. Yours is Sagittarius, by the way, and their reading is done. Um, so we'll, I, I'll let you know if there's any synchronicities. Um, but the reason why I love doing this way is take myself for an example. I'm a Virgo sun and Pisces would be my opposite. Well, I can definitely learn from Pisces energy and vice versa. So that's why we're doing opposites. Plus, I think it, it just, you know, it helps people not to have to wait so long. Um, we are also bringing in or bringing back the major arcanas for the month. So I use these for like a bullet point. Um, sometimes they tell their own little story, but they'll definitely relate back to the main spread. So major arcanas we're going to use. Of course, we're going to get Mother Mary's words of wisdom. Whispering words of wisdom. Let it be. So I'm going to do this at the end of the reading, though. I've been doing it at the beginning. Something this month is telling me do it at the end. So we'll put those right over there. Uh, to clarify or to go deeper and deep we go. Uh, especially for Gemini. you I feel like, you know, I feel like the majority of you like a nice deep reading. So this is what the Gilded Tarot is going to do for us. Um, this is why the readings are a little longer because, you know, I want to give you a roadmap. I want to give you solutions, not just tell you where you've been and where you're at. Um, I want to give you, and another thing I want to say real quick too is, you know, I don't do predictions. Um, I do potentials. And the reason why I say potential is because there is free will. Um, you know, something, it, this, this is probably going to talk about love somewhere in the reading. And 
often to get to that point, there's usually lessons along the road, along the way. And I say the lessons, um, they're, they're there to make, to help give your soul expansion. Think Earth is a classroom. Our soul came down into this classroom to learn, to expand, to raise our vibration. Um, some of us, we came back to pay some karmic debt back. And by the way, once you pay that karmic debt back, it's paid off for eternity. And I feel like you pay it off for generations. It's like you stop it from then going f to the next generation. So, I mean, that's pretty powerful alone. So anyways, the, gold, the Gilded Tarot, to clarify, um, I'm also bringing in the Romance Angels. And um, we'll use these if love comes up. I have a feeling it will. But if it comes up, we'll also bring in the Romance Angels, kind of like a clarifier. Now, for your main spread, Gemini, I am going to use the Tarot of Dreams. By the way, I'm use, I use the same decks for Sagittarius. So for every opposite sign, the same decks will be used. Not the same deck for every reading, um, just for the opposite sign. So Tarot Dreams for your main spread. But let's go ahead and open up this reading. And let's start with the Major Arcanas. And again, I will let you know if there's any synchronicities that come up between your reading and Sagittarius. Some of you may be connected to Sagittarius. Some of you may have Sagittarius in your chart. All right. So let me just take a moment. Let's bring the lid down. And let's begin. All right, Gemini. Again, I'm going to say for November, but I really want you to believe in divine timing. You know, like I have to put a date on it to, I don't have to, but, you know, to add it to a playlist, let's say. Um, all right, I'm going to stop talking. Gemini, beautiful Geminis. What do they need to hear today? I'm feeling patience is part of it. <laughs> Because I feel like patience is what I'm being asked right now. Like the cards must really want shuffled. Mm, well, look at that. It's tower in reverse. I like that. Um, high priestess in reverse. Wait a minute. Maybe I have my whole deck. I have my whole deck in reverse. So, well, unfortunately, we're going to turn it around. But... Not a big deal. So we have the high priestess. We have the tower. Let me turn my deck in the upright. That's my fault. I should check that first. I usually do. Okay. Let me slide these over. We have the full. You know, I love the full following the tower. So, you know, whatever power the tower held... I feel like it's no longer, you know, it's no longer holding any, um, let's just say, negative effects. Yeah, you know, Tower talks about disruption. The High Priestess is coming right before that Tower. It's almost like your intuition, it, it, you know, it kind of feels like your intuition is helping you to almost jump right over that Tower into the Fool's energy. The Fool's about a new beginning. And then we have Judgment. Well, this is your spiritual team. You know, judgment is calling you to the present moment. Just look at that trumpet. Like blowing the trumpet. 
present moment. Why? Because this is where we send your signs. These, the present moment is where you're going to receive your signs. This also talks about a rebirth. And it completely makes sense with the full right there. Right? So it's like the full, and it's interesting that the trumpet is blowing its horn, but it's looking right back at the full. And the foal's looking at the tower. How interesting. Um, you know, this tower just probably is talking about some type of disruption that happened in your life. And I have a feeling, um, you know, a lot of people fear the tower when they see a tower in a reading. But here's the thing. Sometimes I feel like the towers are really helping us to move forward. Um... Sometimes I feel like, yes, we do have to go through, well, we don't have to, but let's say our guides are trying to send us signs and for whatever reason, we're not picking them up or we're ignoring them or what have you. Um, this kind of feels like destiny to me because I feel like your spiritual team um, was moving you on purpose. But then the high priestess, you know, the high priestess uh, is your intuition. So it's like your high, it's like your intuition at least can look at this tower and understand it from like a spiritual point of view. The judgment is like, let's not spend any more time on the tower. Let's start something new. Let's allow this new beginning in one's life. The fool's about taking a leap of faith. But judgment is saying, but we will help guide you. We'll definitely send you the signs, you know. And that's another reason why you want to be in the present moment. Both energies speak of present moment energy. The fool's about a new beginning. The fool's about taking a leap of faith. Um, you know, taking a leap of faith on yourself. Judgment is like, we're here to support you. Your intuition um, I almost feel like for some of you, it's like your intuition uh, warns you of a tower. It's kind of like a red flag. And I feel like a lot of you paid attention to that. You know, it's interesting in this tower, it's the steeple that has that is falling over. It's not the whole building, let's say. Um, some of you, I feel like there may have been people. It's interesting I'm saying people, but I feel that there may be some people that have kind of faded out of your life. But here's the thing. I felt like maybe they needed to. You know, the foal. The foal is about extracting the wisdom from my past experiences, but not bringing the pain or the sadness or the anger, like not bringing that along for the ride. This is like clearing the past, allowing oneself to have a new beginning. Your spiritual team is right behind you. You know what I mean? Like they're there. And that trumpet is so big. I feel like it'd be very hard to miss any signs that they feel like they're about to send you. Because again, remember, it does speak about a rebirth. And the fool would be the perfect energy to accept this rebirth. I feel like it's something good. You know, the fool is also looking back. So it could also talk about like really trusting your intuition as it re relates to whatever is going to be happening. Whatever is next, whatever is new, feels new when you look at the full, like a new beginning. Um, and then again, I feel like whatever power the tower held feels like it no longer can hold that, that let's say, dissatisfaction or, you know, whatever it was. And I'm sure we'll figure that out. Um 
it just feels like I, I'm able to put that in the past. Okay, let's bring in the Tarot of Dreams. Let's slide these over just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and give them a couple shuffles. Um, as many of you know, I always have my cards pre-shuffled. I like to give them a shuffle with you here. You know, when I'm doing a reading like this, I, I in my mind's eye, you're all here. Like you're all with me. And I feel like that's the way my guides want me to feel. Like you're just sitting in the room with me. All right. Let's go ahead and start with the Tarot of Dreams. You know, the High Priestess is the full second mentor along this new journey. And the High Priestess teaches the full that I am your GPS. Use me as your GPS in this lifetime. I, you know, it's like your intuition it's that feeling, it's that gut feeling, that first thing you feel. You know, it can be red flags. Maybe there was a red flag with that tower. And maybe the foal is really learning to listen to his or her intuition more than ever. Again, your spiritual team is like right there behind you. Always, always. This is not a one-time thing, is what I'm hearing. Like, this is, this is always... Always and forever. I have to say your cards want to take their good old time coming out, which is fine. But I have a feeling that someone, or it may be asking all of us to have a little bit more patience Okay, but with what? Well, they really are taking their good old time. All right, we start with the two of pentacles. You know, two pentacles to me means there's a question in front of you. Um, two pentacles they call the juggler's card. I call it using your logical mind. Just because it's pentacles. You know, can talk about like, um, it feels like there's going to be a decision that you're making. And I feel the more grounded you can be. Or the more grounded you feel, the easier the decision. Again, your your spiritual team is here to help guide you with that. We have the King of Wands. King of Wands can be a Leo, Aries, or Sagittarius. Doesn't have to be any of that, though. Let's just see. Let's see what we get. Look at this, the Page of Wands, right next to the King of Wands. Interesting. It's almost like someone's younger energy and then their current energy. Look at the Wands. Now we have the Palace of Wands. Wow. You know, it's interesting because when I buy a deck of cards, I never read the, um, the book. And the reason why I don't read it is because I want my own intuition to, like, just pick up on, you know, like, I can see a card a hundred different times, and each time it can mean something different, you know, it, I can feel it in a different way. Um, but to me, the palace is, like, my ultimate goal, where I'd like to see myself. This is really, well, first of all, it's a palace, but... There's a lot of passion, desire. Um, you know, I feel like it's saying, follow your passion. If you're passionate about something, follow it. 
interesting you have this question before all this. It's almost like this king maybe making a repeat appearance where, you know, maybe I knew them as the page, but now they feel like they're in current energy. Look at this, the chariot. So, the chariot, card of cancer. Um, the chariot to me speaks about first balance, like finding balance within, within myself. It's also about unlimited potential. And the reason why it can be unlimited potential is because it's your intentions to tell this chariot where to go. Like not the reins of the horse. You control this chariot. And I often don't feel a chariot comes in unless you're ready for it. Again, you found some type of balance. Some of you, you're just becoming more grounded in your everyday life. And that may be making your decisions easier. But let's say there's a question. You know, let's say this king is someone who's coming in. And the question would be, you know, can I, is this going to be good for me? Maybe this was the previous tower, you know, back when this person was a page. And then here they come. That might be why the fool's looking right at the tower. Hmm. Look at this, the tower. Now the tower is right under the two of pentacles. Six of cups. Someone that I used to know. Someone that I used to know. Now, six of cups to me, though, talks about, you know, if it's talking about the king, even though this tower is here really twice, um, but I feel like it's the same tower. It's just now, now it's right on the board. Um, what was I going to say? There has to be some happy memories. You know, because this really does talk about like cherished memories of the time or a person or even both. Like this doesn't feel like someone I need to run from. But let's keep going. Mm. Two swords. A little bit of a blindfold there. I get it. Because if this king had anything to do with this tower, then I get where there would be a little hesitation. Um, you know what I do love, though? If this is talking about a person, I do feel like this person has evolved. You know, like, that's what it's showing. I also feel there's a lot of charm connected to this person. Like, they're very charming. Um, and the King of Wands, you know, he is in the upright. Um, is someone who puts action behind their words. So, I don't know. It just kind of feels like someone's coming... You know, I want to say back. And I felt like there probably was a tower. So, you know, it kind of feels like there was a split up. Now, I'm not telling you to take anybody back that you don't want to take back. But again, you know, this person is connected to happy memories. Even though the tower is right there. Two swords. Can I block an opportunity in the two swords? I can. Um, but listen, if it's something that, let's say your guides um, are trying to fulfill like one of your soul's wishes, then I feel like, well, I don't feel like that they would, hmm, how do I say this? Like, I don't feel like they would Bring someone back if it wasn't, if it, what's the word I'm looking for? If the potential wasn't great. You have two twos here. One is a fear-based energy. 
And the other one is, again, more of the logical mind. Well, hello. Palace of Pentacles. Look at that. Two palaces connected. Palace of Wands and the Palace of Pentacles. Interesting. And then we have the Knight of Swords. Interesting. I feel like someone's phone's going to ring. You know, this Knight coming in definitely is some type of communication. Um, it is mirroring the Tower. So I cannot help but think that this page is someone, again, that I used to know who is now coming as a king in mature energy, let's say. doesn't have to mean old, just, you know, I'm older than I was. I've evolved from where I was. And I feel like you're like, but did you? I feel like the answer is yes. But of course, you know, I feel like the best thing you can do in this type of situation, let's, if you're interested, you know, if you're not interested, then you just let it be. But if you are interested, then I feel like give someone the time to reveal. Like if someone comes and says, you know, I'm not the same person I used to be, even though there are happy memories. Um, just giving them the time to reveal to you who they truly are. Like, you know, have you really evolved like you're telling me you have? Again, the chariot is also the masculine and the feminine. And again, balance. And unlimited potential. So at least there's someone who's looking at you in that way. Whether you say yes or no, I feel like this person's looking at you in a way of, well, I feel like, like I want to make a commitment. See, it was on the bottom of the deck. Seven of Cups, interesting. So that's kind of like a question also. Suits under it. Faith. Carter Taurus, but that's your belief system. You know, your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. No, I'm sorry. Talking like it's a star. But it's still your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. Um, and it's believing that they can come true. And then look at that, the Knight of Cups. Unexpected couple fulfillment. So... Maybe some of you have been praying for this. Interesting because, you know, maybe I have been praying for something or at least putting the energy towards that. And then it's answered and you're like, uh-oh. ruh -ro, Now what? Seven of Cups is about making a choice. Choosing a cup. It can talk about you know, the energy being in, you know, like it can be a, like a chaotic day. Hmm. But we also saw that Knight of Cups, which is kind of hiding, but, but in a way I kind of expect that, you know, because it is unexpected. I feel like uh, for those who have been putting like those affirmations out or praying for someone to come into your life, I feel like a prayer is being answered. You know, again, I want to remind you that your spiritual team is here. And I feel like if this is, has anything to do with like a red flag, we're going to see it. I'm not seeing it yet. The only thing I'm seeing um, relating to that, because the full is about taking a leap of faith. And again, what I said about that tower, where it's just a steeple that fell, but look at this tower. You know, it's like lightning struck the tower. Can lightning strike twice? 
And the lightning didn't really affect the tower. This tower is made of gold. Made of gold. Let me also add that if this is someone of the past and, um, you know, I don't like saying that all the time because I know not all of you like hearing that. But let's just say this is a someone of the past and that would be their energy within the Knight of Swords. So it's them coming in, communicating in some way. I feel like, you know, I feel like number one, they would have to recognize um, whatever the tower means here. And it's interesting, we now have two towers, so maybe both have gone through this tower energy. You know, maybe both. Uh, let's say we were together before, and something happened, um, and maybe even someone broke up with me, and I thought that was it. Well, I feel like they also felt that tower. I definitely feel like you're intuitively... Um, in touch with someone. And judgment. You know, and these two palaces. Yeah, Palace of Pentacles. Well, hello, Abundance. So, I don't, f I feel like if this, you know, whoever this may be, um, I don't feel like, you know, I have to worry that this is someone I have to take care of financially. I feel like they're, they would already be set there. I feel like it's someone who has a lot of passion for you. I just feel that. I feel that strongly. There could have been um, plenty of years that have gone by in between this energy. You know, and I also want to say that for some of you, these towers may not even be connected to this king or the page. It could be each of you have gone through like your own tower moments. You know, maybe both becoming single at the same time. But I do feel like you probably know them, but in a good way. Like, it's interesting because even though the tower is here, then you move into the Six of Cups, which is about happy and treasured memories. But then you move into the Two of Swords. It's almost like, be careful what you wish for. Because here it comes. Now, I myself don't feel worried about this because I don't feel like your spiritual team, who is trying to pull you into the present moment, who is asking you to allow yourself to have a new beginning and take this leap of faith, trust your intuition above all, even above um, past towers. You know, towers are life. They're like different things that has happened in our lifetime. And, you know, because it can't all be roses and rainbows. These palaces feel like here's the rainbows and the roses and rainbows. All right, let's bring in the Gilded Tarot. And let's go deeper on this. Deeper if we dare. So we're beginning, we're going to start at the beginning, but read it as a whole. So I am looking at the High Priestess, the Tower, the Fool, and Judgment. You know, you have two energies calling you to the present moment. Two energies that speak about a new beginning or rebirth, however you want to put it. And then your intuition being, you know, it's like your guides saying, we're going to make sure that you that you feel this, that you, you, that you don't fear it. Doesn't have to mean that you have to say yes, but there's a lot of energy pointing to this. So let's see. Um, but we're also connecting them to the first line, 
But again, we're reading it as a whole, so let's just go ahead and make sure my card's in the upright. Let's go ahead and look at this. Hello, Ace of Swords. There's some type of communication coming in. Gemini. There's communication coming in, and it's putting you in a question mode. You know, I guess the good news here is you do get to make that decision. And I do feel like um, the more I can use my logical mind and not my fear-based mind, the better I can make this decision. You know, the Ace of Swords to me is my yes card. But it's also about truth, triumph, honesty. So I feel like it's a it's an honest communication. And then well, hello, Empress. Um, so the Empress is coming over the tower. So the Empress has learned from this tower. And let's remember, the Empress doesn't hold on to past energy. The Empress doesn't shut her heart down. Because of love that didn't go right. Right? She, she's taken the time to learn from it. You know, like, like, I mean this in the nicest of ways, but like, what is my part in it? You know, where is my vibration? What have I learned? Sometimes you're helping to teach another. The Empress is a reminder to keep your heart open. This is a very loving and nurturing type energy. This is the mother figure. Um, she's very creative. She's also very powerful. This is someone who she does trust her intuition above all. So here's what I'm feeling like. Let's say this king is someone who's coming back into your life. But here you are standing as the empress. Well, first of all, that two of swords would not fit because I feel like fear would have, you know, though I guess that's real life at the same time. That's not going to stop this communication from coming in. I feel like the Empress is also showing how you yourself have evolved into this beautiful person. It doesn't mean, you know, like my whole life, I've got my whole life together. It just means that I'm able to handle my life. Um, this is also someone who's very creative. Remember that. Someone who um, receives a lot of epiphanies. And again, she's connected to the high priestess. Now, we all receive epiphanies, ideas, signs. But the Empress is someone who takes them. And think it well is thinking. I don't know if thinking is the right word, but she eventually gives birth to these ideas, these epiphanies. Two of Wands. Interesting because the Two of Wands is mirroring the Two of Swords. It's like you have made a decision. You know, first we have the two of pentacles, right? Using your logical mind, trusting your in, your intuition above all. And don't forget, your spiritual team is really what's bringing this energy in. And it's asking for you, first of all, to be in the present moment energy. But also to allow yourself to have a new beginning. Now, again, it is it is up to you. But the Two of Wands, to me, is stepping onto that path. And that may be why I said, you know, sometimes if you're not sure, then take it slow. Give someone a chance to reveal who they truly are. There's no way that anybody could pull the wool over your eyes as the Empress. No way. So I, I kind of feel like there's nothing to fear here. And then the two of wands feels like, here I go. 
Here's the communication, right? We already knew that through the Knight of Swords coming into the reading. But listen, because this Ace is so close, or the Ace of Swords is so close to this tower, someone may have some, a little bit of explaining to do. Maybe there is an apology. Um, maybe someone really does understand. You know, it's interesting because I get this feeling, and I know this is not going to be for everyone, but I get this feeling that we were together before, and for 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 whatever reason it ended, I feel like both of you, both of you went through this tower type energy. And that tower type energy just means that there was some type of disruption, right? Something didn't go right. Um, it something ended, right? And maybe didn't end on the best of terms. That's most relationships, you know, the endings. But I can't help but keep seeing judgment saying, but what I'd really like you to do if you would, is take on the fool's energy. And taking on the fool's energy means that you're willing to take that leap of faith. Let's keep going. You know, this could be someone brand new. But because the Page of Wands is right next to the King of Wands, I cannot help but think that that you were connected before. We have, look at this, the Two Pentacles again, over the Palace of Wands. And then the Fool. The Fool mirroring that Ace of Swords. I feel like someone's going to ask you for another chance. I do. I feel like someone's going to ask you for another chance. And I feel like someone wants to come in and have a truthful communication, a truthful um, conversation with you. I do feel like you're going to listen. I do feel like it's going to take a moment for you to make the decision of whether you're going to move forward or not. Even though the Ace of Swords is my yes card and it's mirroring the full, right? Taking that leap. But it is come, the full's coming over the chariot. So again, it does speak about unlimited potential. And again, it speaks of balance. So interesting, maybe the masculine and the feminine are now both in balanced energy. Maybe it's taken this person some time. Like, because I get this feeling like you've moved on. You've done things with your life. You know, you're sitting here as the empress. To me, that feels like, you know, it doesn't have to mean like you have a lot of money, but she is bountiful. And why? Because she takes these, you know, she listens to her, in, her, insp or her intuition and her inspiration. And then she gives birth to these ideas. So I feel like you are in a very creative type energy. But also remember, she's loving and nurturing. But again, she's nobody's fool. Hello, Knight of Pentacles, your guardian angel. Um, by the way, you do have a lot of the same cards that Sagittarius has. Um, Knight of Pentacles, one of my favorite, one of my favorite energies. And the reason why is it's like, you know, we started with judgment, which is your spiritual team. But now it feels like one of your very special guides is stepping forward. This Knight of Pentacles talks about first patience, 
right? Having patience because the night comes at the right time. Not before, not after. Right when you need me. And I like that it's coming over the tower. So, again, these towers that we're seeing, I feel like they don't hold a lot of weight. Of course, they could just, again, disrupt your life. Probably were not easy, but I don't feel that they carry the weight that they probably once did. So, this Knight of Pentacles tells you that I'm bringing a pentacle into your life. And this is something that's tangible. Something you can touch. Maybe someone that you can kiss. But I come at the right time. The right time. So probably when you will better receive it. And I often don't feel like it's a one-time thing. You know, it's like the more I pay attention to my own intuition, I don't let fear rule the day. I'm willing to take chances, right? Um, but but intelligent chances, logical chances. Um, I'm going to allow myself to have these new beginnings, you know, two foals. But it makes sense because I feel like it's talking about two people. Now, I do love that the foals over the cherry because that means that this energy is balanced. Interesting, you have two knights mirroring each other. You know what else I feel, Gemini? I feel that you, you know, you've been creating a life for yourself. And I feel like the Palace of Pentacles really belongs to you. Now, it doesn't mean you're rich. But who knows, maybe the two of you together. Well, when I say rich, I mean it in a couple different ways, like... You know, rich doesn't always have to mean money. Um, but I do feel like, like, I feel like saying, like, you made a name for yourself. You did follow your instincts as it relates to your creativity. But now I feel like love is entering. And maybe I've been so focused on my money, my career, my creativity. Um, and by the way, I feel like when you're in that energy, when you're concentrating in your creative house, I feel like that opens up a lot of energy. Why? Because I'm not focusing on the tower. And because the Empress is coming over the tower, I feel like you've put the tower behind you. But whoever's coming in may not know that. You know what I mean? They may they may be coming in knowing or thinking like, all right, we have to have a real, real conversation. I've got to like claim that, you know, I know my part and I feel like you as the empress, you know, your part, you know, but this person feels like they're ready to come in and, um, you know, clear things up, probably apologize. They understand the effect of the tower. And they understand it because they themselves have experienced it. All right, let's keep going. And I also kind of love that the king is looking at you as the empress. You know, like, I could have been in relationships after you. But there's nobody like you. We have the devil. Heart of Capricorn. Um, this really speaks about temptation. Though for some of you, it may just be Capricorn. It's coming over the Six of Cups. Interesting. Listen, with all this divine energy on the table, first of all, I feel like, I don't feel like you'll get pulled back into something 
that you know um, wouldn't wouldn't be good for you. You know, let, and again, if this is speaking about love, and someone's going to come in and proclaim their love, um, I feel like you have no interest. Like I don't feel like you'd give someone the time of day unless you yourself had this interest. You know, the devil can speak of illusions. And many times um, in tarot decks, you'll see the devil who has influence over the lovers, but it's a negative influence over the lovers, but it's illusionary. So I feel like someone has broken through this illusionary energy and now sees the truth for what the truth is. And I kind of feel like it's the other person. We have the nine of wands. That's good. We have the knight of wands. First of all, holy wands. And then we have the ten of wands over the knight of swords. Wow. Someone has reflected Someone has done reflection over these past tower, over the past tower. I feel like this is about two people who experienced this tower together. One may have given it and the other suffered from it. Um, but there is in no way do I feel like you're still suffering from it. You know what I mean? Or another way of saying that is the effects of the tower feel like they've kind of worn off. I definitely feel like this person, you know, like, I feel like the conversation would go like this, you know, let's say it's on the phone, like, hi, hi, can we talk? Hmm. About what? Well, can you just listen and let me talk for a moment? All right. And I feel like they would say, you know, you have always been in my heart. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I myself was just in lower vibrational energy back then. I myself was tempted to the wrong type of energy. I know what I did to us. I know. I know my part in it. I spent a lot of time thinking about it, reflecting over it. And I know that I did not play my part. I know that you put the brunt of this relationship on your shoulders. I know all that now. But I can't help but think about you and miss you. So I am here asking you for potentially a new beginning. I'm willing to take it day by day. All I'm asking for is a chance. But I do understand my part in this. And I know the pain I've caused you. Would you please consider one more chance? Let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you. Okay. Look at that, another freaking tower. A tower over a tower. But with the Knight of Pentacles there. What if I was to say 
that may be part of this whole divine plan. Part of it was the tower. What if I was to say, without the tower, someone maybe wouldn't have realized the true importance of you in their life, the true love that they have for you. I don't feel, you know, I feel like I know why the tower happened. I feel like there was some type of lower vibrational energy that they were probably in, maybe both. You know, again, it feels like younger time. Well, you know, when I know better, I do better. And now I feel like they know better and they want to do better. But I feel like they have to talk you into it. And why? Well, because I feel like you're sitting pretty good right now. Like, I don't feel like this need, like this overwhelming need for someone. Though, as I say that, I have a feeling they have also been on your mind. All right. Well, hello, Ten of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles. The High Priestess. It's almost like they're thinking about you. And you start thinking about them. You're thinking about each other. And then the Hangman. So the Hangman is mirroring this tower over here. You know, the hangman, it's a pause in action. But the person there is really seeking wisdom. Like spiritual wisdom for this earthly plane. You know, it's almost like coming in at the right time. Again, that's what the Knight of Pentacles is about. I come in at the right time. So, the Knight of Pentacles is... Again, about someone or something coming into your physical world. Again, tangible. And I feel like this other person is probably taking them some time. And I feel like, do you know why? Well, probably because they, again, understand their part. You know, it's it like, I do feel like, you know... It's almost like they need to forgive themselves. But you may also need to forgive them if you so choose. I already know I'm going to have people be like, there's no way in hell. Well, that's probably not that person. Because I don't feel like this would be the energy. There's no way in hell I'm taking you back. It just doesn't feel like that. Because in a way, I feel like I probably have been thinking about them. And they're thinking about me. It's almost like telepathy. Your spiritual team is asking you again to allow yourself to have this rebirth. Allow yourself to have this new beginning. But you do have free will. And it is showing. I do feel the recognition of, again, what I have done. You know, can this be a past lifetime? Of course it can. Um, because I do read past lifetimes. But I want to remind you that the Knight of Cups is there. So, unexpected cup of love. And then faith, the Hierophant. But he's actually, you know, he's he's praying. He's praying. And then that Seven of Cups making an emotional decision. Hmm. Interesting. All right. There's a couple things I want to look at. And then, I'm. well, you know what? I think, you know what I think we should do right now? Let's bring out the romance angels. And, you know, first of all, I want you to understand that I feel like your spiritual team is saying how proud they are of you. 
you know, and the things that you're doing in your life. Uh, uh, you know, I feel like, I really don't feel like the tower has, again, the power that it once held. But maybe you cleared that energy. And, you know, that's a beautiful thing. It does feel like some time has passed, though. You know, I feel like judgment is not just for you. I feel it's also for them. It's like their spiritual team. Because, again, the hangman, I'm seeking wisdom on the steps that I want to take next. Is it a good idea? Will it be received? And I feel like they're receiving that answer. And maybe what they're receiving is just saying, well, just take a chance. Take a chance. Have a conversation. You know, the Knight of Wands, I feel like I skipped over. This is about passion that's coming into your life. All right. But I want to look at really this person. As it relates to, whoa, 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 things are jumping everywhere. That fell down on my lap. But let's take them the way they came out. Well, passion. Interesting, I just talked about the Knight of Wands, where I said passion was coming into your life. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Passion. Express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. Heart to heart conversations. I felt that right from the get go. Like, I feel like this is the energy that really needs to happen. Heart to heart. Honestly, discuss your feelings with each other. You know, it's letting all the bullshit go and getting right to the truth of the matter. Codependency. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. You know, it's interesting because um, I have a feeling this is talking about the person coming in. But I feel like this is old energy. So, especially with the devil here, there could have been energy that, again, they were just tempted to and maybe had a hard time saying no to. But I feel like that was at a younger time. But I feel like now I know better. So I do better. Children. Your love life is being affected by children. But I have to tell you, what I feel is this is more about this page because I feel like you probably knew each other when you were young. Now, I'm not saying you're old, but I do feel that energy. Again, the page moving into the king, children, the six of cups, and then you deserve love. You are lovable. Why, yes, you are. So, heart-to-heart -heart conversations. I already feel like that's happening through the Knight of Swords and the Ace of Swords. And I feel like it's truthful conversation. Like, I don't feel like this is about lies. Number one, if there were lies, you'd pick it up right away. I already know that. I do feel like they are going to express their love towards you. I feel like whether I say yes or no to this, I'm still going to feel the passion. Interesting. Um, all right. So that makes sense. But I want to look at a 
just want to look at the tower over here with the romance angels. Because again, there's two towers connected. But then you have your guardian angel over that energy. Look at this past life relationship. You have known each other before. That may be why I said, could this potentially be a past life relationship? Could be. But, you know, to me, this means that you that this is talking about soulmate energy, right? Because soulmates know each other for eternity. And then separation. That makes sense with all the towers. Time apart from your partner is on the horizon. Now, I feel like this is old energy. It's already happened. Past life. I feel like you've definitely loved in a past life. You're probably loving another one. But again, you're connected for eternity. These towers, because there's two of them, it feels like a past life and then a current life. And there was separation. You know, separations of lifetimes, but also I feel like a separation within this life also. Okay, that makes sense. But I really want you to see this past life relationship. You have known each other before. You know, sometimes that's why, you know, we may meet someone at a younger time in our life and neither one of us are emotionally, um, what's the word, mature yet. You know what I mean? Um, I think back to my younger years and some of the stupid things I've done. You know, matter of fact, many of you already know this, that I'm back with someone that I knew when I was in, you know, I guess you could say childhood. We were teenagers. Um, we did split up. There was that separation. There was that tower. But then 40 years, one day my phone rings. And, you know, I, I know many of you are tired of me telling this story, but I can see how it fits, you know, like one day out of the blue. And I have to tell you, I was not having a good day that day. And the Seven of Cups is kind of what it's reminding me of. But nonetheless, my phone rang and it was with Sam, the person I now live with. And there were a lot of heart to heart conversations. You know, many of you know, it really took me five years before I made that ultimate decision of moving in with him. You know, like I wanted to, but fear did stop me you know and it was the silliest of things it was like you know i'm someone who doesn't like to wear makeup when i'm home and i you know i told myself oh my god you're gonna have to wear makeup you know what i mean i mean this is a love relationship you gotta look good and i just wanted to be who i was so that stopped me like like you know and i look at it now i think it's silly because Truth be told, I, I never wear makeup when I'm home. And Sam doesn't love me less because of that. It was my fear. I feel like this person really has taken the time to look at what happened, evaluate it, I feel like you never left their heart. And they probably nev never left yours. Because again, I know that you're soulmates, if not twin flames. Interesting. I feel like I said the same thing in Sagittarius' this reading. Hmm. Now, here's something I want to say, though, um, that I'm just realizing right now. We have the Empress right, who does pay attention to her. She really does listen to her intuition. She, more than anyone, 
And she is receiving signs, epiphanies, ideas, and she does put them to use. So the Empress mirroring the Ten of Pentacles down here makes complete sense to me because I, I feel like you are pretty grounded at this point. But I also feel the Ten of Pentacles is about loyalty. To me, like the Ten of Cups is a house of love, and yeah, that's all beautiful and all that. But the Ten of Pentacles to me is about loyalty. It's about a house that can take root. You know, it does feel like it's something that lasts for the rest of my life, the rest of our lives. And again, I don't feel like anyone's coming in who is like a bum, who doesn't have a job. Um, I don't feel like this is anyone coming in where you end up having to take care of them. No, I feel like if anything, they don't want that. They want to be able to give you what you deserve. And I feel like it took this time and losing you for them to really understand that. And again, I feel like you both have probably loved other people in between. But something is telling me that that each of you had the other within you, your heart. Now, what I mean by that is, yes, we probably each had other relationships. You know, I think about Sam and I again, like, you know, he got married, I got married. Um, but there was always this like, mm, like, I just never felt fulfilled. You know what I mean? Like, I just never felt completely fulfilled. I was in love. Don't get me wrong. Um, and I don't regret, you know, the person who I ended up with that it was for like 25 years, that person came in divine timing right when I needed that person and me for them. Like, I, it was very clear, but I could never find that deep love. Just couldn't find it. I mean, we even got engaged and then I, I canceled it. Um, I mean, we stayed together, but I canceled it. Though I did leave a few times and then went back. You know what I mean? Um, but we remain good friends. And I don't know why I'm talking about myself so much today. Um, let's take the romance angels one more time. And let's look at the fool over the chariot. Because I feel like all this energy is, well, of them... But I want to remind you, you have two fools here. So two people taking this chance, right? Look at this. Pay attention to the red flags. And let your friends help you. Maybe discuss this with your friends. I feel like the red flags, I feel like they were of an earlier time. Keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. Well, that is so true. Keep an open mind. I feel like, um, especially with the high priestess next to the tower, there probably were some red flags. And maybe they were ignored. You know what I mean? But again, you know, it's like I don't want anybody beating themselves up because that's human nature. You know, I think of all the red flags I've had in my life and how many I've ignored and the trouble it got me into. But I feel like this wouldn't be a bad idea bouncing it off of a few of your friends, you know, or those closest to you, you know, because I'm thinking for myself. I would, I would go to my daughter and, and, you know, ask her what she thought about it. And I did when Sam reached out to me and she said, go for it. Okay.
All right. Let's bring the gilded to right back in. And um, I think what I want to do, Gemini, is just go right across the middle of the table. You know, it's not very often I get a reading where it's very clear to me that this person, there is someone that wants to come back into your life. And I definitely feel, again, that they have evolved. And I also feel you have evolved. Look at this, the three of wands. That's optimism. But this is about living in the present moment. Much like the fool's energy. This is, you know, putting an optimistic view on any potentials. This is telling the universe, I know my ships will come in in their due time. And really believing that and trusting that. But in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy this present moment. This could also signify or signal that, you know, as this comes towards you, there's no need to rush it. But again, optimism. Well, hello, lovers. First of all, your major arcana. And the meaning of the card is a head over heart decision. And I'm sure that is part of it. But it's also chemistry. You know, and it's also interesting because in the three of wands, I am living in the current moment and you're living as the empress, which is beautiful. Um, but these ships, again, they will come in. You know, it's just like looking back at faith, right? Someone maybe putting those intentions out there. Again, I feel like this person has lived in your heart. And they and you and your they and yours. Does that make sense? Um so I'm putting the intention out there and then I'm just gonna let it be. I also love this image because you can see the feminine, right? And it's coming right by the Empress. And we have the masculine right there. Not in person yet. But it's like I can feel their energy. I mean, there's a lot of chemistry in that energy. And it would make sense that this would also be of a past life. Then we have the Page of Wands again. Page of Wands is right underneath there. You know, definitely someone that you never forgot. Pedro wants me as a little risk taker, but it may be asking you to take a risk, to take a chance. You know, the Pedro wants to me is someone who does take a lot of risk in their lives and they don't all pay off. But this is someone who gets back up again. And I feel like that's what this person is doing. They're getting back up again. But they're getting back up again with a lot of clarity, understanding of their part within the towers. You know, I almost feel like this is someone who just can't let you go. Again, I do feel like there's time. There's been time in between. But the truth is, is like, I just can't let you go. Please don't let me make you or don't let me. I don't want to go. Seven of Swords. Hmm. You know, I feel like the Seven of Swords usually is deception and envy, right? But because the Three of Wands is opening up this line, I feel like a seven of swords must be old energy. And this can talk about someone who, again, is coming right next to that page where like in their younger days, they could have told a lot of white lies and it made it very hard to believe, you know, the truth. 
Now, though that happened, again, the Ace of Swords and the Knight of Swords feels like I am telling the truth. Some of the Swords can definitely be someone who takes more than their fair share. But it can also be one's own thought system. We have the Magician. The Manifester. Right under the Fool. The Magician is the Fool's first mentor. And the magician teaches the fool. As you begin along this new journey, you already possess everything you need for it to be truly successful. You possess that wisdom. Like all the tools are already on the table. So you possess the experience of the pentacles, of the swords, of the cups, and of the wands. It's within you. The second mentor is the High Priestess. I am your GPS for this lifetime. Trust within me. We have the Nine of Pentacles. Nice. First of all, this talks about um, the meaning of this card is uh, successful self-employment. It's also about material harvest. So I feel like what this is saying is, you know, you haven't wasted your life. It's not like you were sitting, you know, lying in your bed crying every single night. You know, maybe in the beginning. But I feel like you've moved way beyond that. Again, a very independent nature. Especially because it's mirroring um, the Empress. Interesting. I just realized the Empress now with the Nine of Pentacles <clears throat> talks about what you're doing in the world and the success that you could have. You know, it can also answer a question. Can I be successful with, let's say I'm receiving some new epiphanies? The answer is yes. But I also feel like this is saying that you... Like you yourself are not the same person. Because I feel like you feel very independent. So it's going to be hard. I feel like this person's got their job cut off for them. To try to, you know, I want to say sway you back. But I don't feel like they're doing it in any type of like, in a way that you need to worry because this Nine of Pentacles moving right into the Ten of Pentacles. We have the Emperor. So, card of Aries. But, the Emperor. I kind of love this right now because it's coming right under the Lovers. And the Emperor is normally someone that we can definitely look up to. We have the Empress. Now we have the Emperor. And you know what's interesting? What's connecting them is the lovers. The lovers is connecting them. So where the feminine's energy was in the current moment, the masculine energy not quite there, but I'm feeling it. Well, now I feel like here I am. Here I am. And I love the way that it's showing up. You know, to me, the Empress and the Emperor are what I call my power couple. There's nothing they can't overcome. And they both have learned through their own life experiences how to be compassionate and empathetic towards others. You know, and it is their own experiences that have taught them. And then look at this. Soulmates. I already knew that. Eye to eye. Same vibration. Someone. 
has done a lot of work on themselves. And you may have also. But I definitely feel the emperor is the masculine who first, because I feel like first, I feel like this is someone that I probably never really truly let go of. Doesn't mean I didn't move on with my life. I feel like you did. But their energy has just always been part of you. And it makes sense because we know that you loved in a past life. And I feel like, you know, you probably loved in this life. Something didn't work out. But I feel like you're going to love again. And everything that's showing with that tells me, like the Ten of Pentacles, these two palaces, you know, it makes me feel like it is for the rest of your life. If, if you make that decision to go forward. I also love this energy, the emperor and the empress for any type of collaboration. You know, like maybe you're doing something and it feels like you're doing well. And it feels like they're doing well also. But you may be doing something that's very similar to each other. Like in the world, in your career, in your creative house. And maybe because you're feeling strong, independent, that really does feel like the right time for this night to bring in this pentacle. And I'm calling it a pentacle, but it's really like a blessing. You know, soulmates can withstand these towers. They can withstand these towers. I know that from my very own life, but I also know that just from how long I've been reading Tarot, how my spirituality has opened, what my own guides tell me through personal readings. Like I know that love can come back together again. And I know that this person is ready to talk, to have a heart to heart conversation. By the way, all of this feels like it's being presented to you by your spiritual team. You know, and then we saw red flags. So I feel like if there's going to be a red flag, it's going to be clear. Now, I personally don't feel like there's a red flag now. I feel like there may have been a red flag before. And I feel like it was it was someone's immaturity, you know, someone who was just tempted to something or maybe even substance, because we did see somewhere something about addiction. So it could be someone who just like, you know, was a big drinker back in the day. Well, that can only last so long within a relationship or whatever it may be. It does. It just feels like lower vibrational energy but sometimes you know i do better when i know better sometimes i'm just young and dumb but i just can't help but feel that you're just made for each other you're made for each other and again, this is not their first lifetime. You know, I feel like a question you can ask yourself is, you know, in the relationships you've been in, have you felt like you just couldn't find like real fulfillment? And if the answer is yes, I have a feeling it has something to do with this person. Because this feels like the person who really I don't want to say owns your heart because you're free to do with you're free to do whatever you want 
whenever you want. And I do feel that, like freedom. And feeling independent and being strong on my own two feet. So if someone's going to come in and try to get you to give them another chance, well, they better show as the emperor. But here they are showing as the emperor. And I love that the lovers is connecting the empress and the emperor. You know, this could also represent, again, a twin flame relationship. But don't get stuck on that word. You know, this just feels like, it feels like love. And it feels like it was love then. It's just that life got in the way. But now because I know that, I feel like this is someone who wants to dedicate themselves to you. You are the one who's going to say yay or nay. Like, just, I feel like I want to say, just allow yourself to experience the energy. See how it feels. Um, I feel like the conversation is going to be very truthful, which can mean that it can be a little bit difficult. This is not about putting all the blame on them. But I do feel like they're putting all the blame on themselves. And I only say that because you were also young. You know what I mean? And when we're young, we're really just trying to find our way. You know, but here's the bottom line. I feel like these lovers, these towers can't stop them from loving. It may disrupt this love. It may, you know, break it up. But I feel like, buddy, it will come back together again. And I don't know why, but your whole reading seems to want to talk about that. I feel like, have that conversation. And, um, you know, if you're someone who's going to write a comment saying there's no way in hell I'm taking that low life back, <laughs> then chances are this isn't your reading. You know what I mean? Um, and not every reading is going to be for every person. Or as you're, you know, maybe last month's reading is helping you to evolve into this month's reading. But my God, does this feel like it wants to come together? And listen, the spiritual energy on the table with judgment, asking you to allow yourself to have this rebirth or even allow this relationship to have a rebirth. And then the Knight of Pentacles, right? I come at the right time, not before. So it must mean that I come at a time when I feel you are also ready doesn't mean that you have to jump into something. But I feel the more I can, listen, just allow yourself to feel what you feel. And I don't know. I mean, I do know. I'm just thinking, how can I relay it to you what I'm feeling? I hope that you can pick up what I'm feeling. You know, I also love the four of pentacles below the emperor because I feel like this is saying this person is very grounded. But listen, I have very two empathetic and compassionate people on the board right now. That may have not always been the case, but right now, that's how they sit. I have two that are soulmates. That is just the case. I have two that had past lives together. And judgment may just be saying that this is when, you know, it's like, I feel like the seven of pentacles needs to be out here because, you know, that's like your soul seed of intention. But let's not forget, someone's praying for this. And the Knight of Cups right below that. 
unexpected cup of love. Well, here it is. All starting through communication, which is the way I feel it would be the easiest way for you. Now, of course, the script could be flipped, but for whoever is receiving this communication, um, I feel like that's how it must start. That's where you get your best shot at this. And again, I feel like the words of, like, I know my part. I know what I have done. But I also know that no one has ever lived up to you. And now think about us as the emperor and the empress. Wow. And the lovers connecting them and the soulmates right beside the emperor. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? All right, let's bring Mother Mary over this reading. You know, you could have had three lifetimes together. And I don't feel like, you know, every lifetime we let's get together. You know what I mean? Like some lifetimes, maybe you want to have different experiences. You want to learn different lessons. You want different soul expansion. But I definitely feel the energy of past lifetimes. All right, let's take Mother Mary. Mother Mary's advice. Whoa. Sobriety. My clear mind is easily able to focus and concentrate. Now, I have to tell you, I feel like this is past energy. This is part of what? Let's just say your love partner. Part of the issue that they had to overcome. But I do feel like they did. We have giving and receiving. This is like the Six of Pentacles. I balance being generous and receptive because both are equally important. Where here, I felt like someone may say to you, I understand that you put the brunt of the, of the relationship upon your shoulders. But now I'm in a much more balanced state. Hope. It's like the star. I trust that God has a wonderful solution and brilliant plans in store for me. Wow. Yes, he does. And then health. My prayers for healing miracles have been heard and answered. Health. Sobriety. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if this person may have a little bit of health issues. You know, especially if, let's just say, back in the day, they were big drinkers, you know, or used substances or something like that. Um, but I do feel like they overcame that, and that's a hard thing to overcome. I feel like I just want to take one more right in the middle. I'm going to take it right off the top. Family. I pray for my family and give this situation over to God for answers, support, and healing. Well, you are a soulmate family. Some of you could even have a child together. But to me, this is kind of signifying like part of what that tower is about. I feel like someone just, you know, I don't know. I'm picking up like was probably a big drinker back in the day. And it probably did affect their health. You know, their liver is probably not in the best of conditions. But I don't feel like it's anything um, because, again, healing, right? There's healing over that. So I feel like 
this is where I should leave the reading. And, you know, it puts the ball in your court. You can say no. And you'll be fine. You know what I mean? You'll be fine. Because I feel like you're fine right now. Though I do feel like there's a little part of you missing. And I feel like they're praying that you don't say no. And I feel like everything that they say to you through your conversation, I do feel like it's heart to heart. And I do believe them. But that's up to you. But the way I feel it right now, I believe them. I think they have evolved tremendously. You know, yes, they have the same heart, but I feel like everything else about them has changed. You know, before they may have been a taker. Now they're happy to give. Now they feel the joy in giving. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I feel like I could go on and on and on, but here's the bottom line. It's all going to depend on you. It's, it's the ball is in your court, but I feel like your spiritual team is behind it. They're asking you to take a leap of faith, but they can't make you. You know what I mean? That's free will. But then you get the fool again over the chariot. So a new beginning connected to the chariot's energy. That really does mean unlimited potential. Definitely with the full mirroring that Ace of Swords, someone is asking for this new beginning. And I also love that the Emperor and the Empress are together because I just feel like they're meant to be together. And, you know, both of them have lived a lot of life, had had a lot of experiences, but both of them are... People who learn from these experiences doesn't mean we learn it in the same time. Okay, here I am going on and on and on. Um, you know, I see the beauty in this. Um, but I, I, I also see where you would be a little leery. Yet, yet I trust them. You know, I do. I just trust them. I trust that they really do love you. And I trust that they really do miss you. And I trust that when they say that this new beginning, um, that they, you know, there's nothing more that they want than to give to you. I trust them. And I do feel like they've been praying about this. And you are their answered prayer. I'm going to let that be. I, I'm just telling you, Gemini, I could go on and on and on with your readings. Um, you know, there's certain signs where the readings are always so interesting, and you're one of them. Um, so, can't wait to read your comments. By the way, I already know some people are going to leave a comment, even though I'm saying it, that there's no way I'm going to take that son of a bitch back. Again, this is someone I feel like has lived in your heart also. Um, but it is your choice. But I don't feel like this is someone who, um, you know, I feel like, yes, they probably hurt you. But I don't know that they meant to hurt you. I feel like they just, and this is not making excuses for them. I just feel like they just didn't, you know what I'm feeling? I feel like, I feel like my dad drank. My grandfather drank. And therefore, I drank. You know, it's like I followed generational curses, so to speak. But I broke that curse. And whether you take them back or not, I feel proud of them for that. Because I know that wasn't easy. So, just stop talking. Love you guys. I thank you for every way you support this channel. Truly, 
Um, without you, this channel wouldn't be alive. So every day, I'm very grateful for each and every one of you. Um, I welcome everyone who's new to our beautiful soul family. Um, and, you know, that's why I feel like readings resonate with so many because I feel like we're all soulmates. You know, we're all going to be together after we leave this world. And we'll probably be sitting here talking about like the readings that we had and our experiences that we had in this lifetime. So that's just what I feel. Um, but I truly, truly love you guys. I thank you. And I'll see you next time at our table. Definitely leave your comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know where you're at in this reading. Um, again, if this is someone, there's like no way in hell. I just have a feeling it may not be for you. But there may be messages in here also. Because let's not forget, judgment is your spiritual team. And they are calling you to jump into the fool's energy, which talks about a new beginning. And you sitting as the empress means that you have cleared past energy. It means that you are strong enough. You know what I mean? But also, it's your free will. Okay, I'm going to stop talking. I love you. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.